Mandela, let's talk a little bit more electronics here. Let's talk a little bit more robotics here and uh, talk about our next topic, which is going to be potentiometers. Now, we've talked about how to turn an LED on, and we have really two choices. We have on and off. We've talked about how to control it with a push button or a slide switch, capacitive touch sensor, really on and off. What you're going to find you want to refer to those things as is a digital input. Digital meaning it can be either on or off. But sometimes in electronics, you want to go in the gray area. You want to go in the middle ground. And that's the time when you want to turn around and you actually want to use um, something that can do, say, a dimmer switch. Uh, in this case, we're going to use what's called a potentiometer for that. And one of the things that, that does is what's called an analog value. We can actually kind of work along a, a gradient or a, um, you know, work uh, in half measures, so to speak. Really good example of this would be a digital clock. If you look at a digital clock, all of the lights on the digital clock are either on or off. They're the ones that have the, the big block seven segment LEDs that actually display, believe it or not, you have one of these in your Arduino kit right here. Um, they actually display on one of these guys. Now, those are digital clocks. An analog clock obviously has hands that move and those hands can show a variety of different things, whereas those LEDs can only be on or off. We're going to talk about the analog world here very briefly uh, by talking about potentiometers. So let's look our way into Tinkercad, and as we usually do, we're going to put this together first. We're going to grab a potentiometer, which I'm going to refer to in this video by the term trim pot as well. All right, uh, trim pots are often referred to small potentiometers in electronics, which, quite frankly, all the ones we're going to be working with are. Now. What this is, is actually a variable resistor, and you're going to see it sometimes referred to that way. How it works is actually really simple. We've talked in the past about the idea that resistance is dependent on how long something is. So if I have a piece of wire that is two ohms of resistance and is one centimeter long, if I have two centimeters of it instead, if I double the distance, I also double the amount of resistance. It's actually a summative effect. I could say that for every centimeter of that wire, I have two ohms of resistance, and those just add up and add up and add up. So here we have a potentiometer, and what's inside of here is actually a big horseshoe made out of carbon. And there's three things on the bottom. There's a terminal one, terminal two on the outside, and in the middle there's what's called a wiper. The terminals themselves are connected to that piece of carbon, and they have a set resistance value. So right now I've got a 250 kilo ohm resistor here, 250 kilo ohm potentiometer. Um, and that means that between terminal 1 and terminal 2, I'm going to find a quarter million ohms of resistance. And that's a fair bit of resistance. But the wiper, this is the cool piece. This is actually going to run its way along here, and it actually looks kind of like a clock in some ways. It's almost like the hand on a clock. And the hand of the clock is running along that piece of carbon. And the further along we move it, the less or more, depending on which direction we're going, resistance we are going to have in this potentiometer. And it's going to allow us to actually read the ability of how much resistance we can have here. Now, we, we have a way of testing this, believe it or not. We can actually go ahead and we can grab a potentiometer here, sorry, potentiometer, a multimeter here. And the fun thing with the multimeter is the multimeter can actually measure this exact effect. So let's hook up some leads here and let's see what we can do. Okay, I'm going to cook this up to terminal 1. It doesn't really matter which terminal you do. I'm a big fan of right angles when we're doing wires. I don't know if you've noticed that. It's a good thing to have and I also like them when they're colored correctly. All right, let's start our simulation and let's test our resistance. So right now, to nobody's surprise, we have zero ohms of resistance. But what we're going to see is that as I move this potentiometer along its axis, my number of, of ohms, in this case kilo ohms, thousands of ohms, is actually going up until I get to the very end when I hit 250 kilo ohms of resistance, exactly like this said it was going to do. So the further along I go, the more resistance I get. Now let's hook this up to the breadboard. How I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to put an LED on the wiper. Um, and in this case, I've got an LED pointing towards negative. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, I'm going to put this on the wiper. I'm going to make sure, oop, that was the wrong spot. I'm going to make sure the wiper is sitting on this LED's, uh, part of this LED circuit. I'm literally taking that first LED circuit we did. We're going to break it somewhere along one of the wires, and we're going to insert the potentiometer. And so basically what we did with the push button as well. So now I know that the wiper is now attached to this LED, which means that if I run voltage through this potentiometer, theoretically I should get a different amount of voltage running through this resistor and then through this LED. Um, so let's try it. Through terminal 1, I'm going to connect positive voltage, and I'm going to use those nice right angle wires we talked about. And through terminal 2, I'm going to go negative voltage. I'm going to be really simple about this. 
Okay, you got positive on one side and negative on the other. There is electrons flowing through this thing when we turn it on. Now remember in one of the first lessons we talked about the idea of connecting positive directly to negative. We're not actually doing that. We actually have an ohmic device running through here right now that's gonna actually prevent us from doing that. Now, I wouldn't recommend running it at zero dial because if you have zero dial, you've got very little resistance in the circuit. You might have a few issues. I digress. Let's test this out. Right now my LED turns on, life is good. Okay, I'm actually going to turn this back and you guys can see that I get a dimmer effect on this. I actually get an LED that it actually by the bottom of here turns off. And what I've done is I've actually accidentally hooked this up backwards. I'm actually getting a high amount of uh, high amount of resistance down this end, whereas I'm getting a low amount down this side. To fix that, I could really simply just switch my wires from positive and negative and uh, there would be absolutely nothing wrong with that. This should probably be black. There we go. Okay, start simulation. Now I've got nothing there. Positive, positive, positive. I could also turn around and I could take this resistor and I could make it much, much smaller because I have a fair bit of resistance running through this circuit now. I could go as low as one even if I wanted to. And notice when I start my simulation, this blows up, okay? It has 750 milliohms or milliamps of power running through it. But as I move this along, you can see that it. Yeah, I could actually get it to a point where I'm getting a caution sign. I'm getting a relatively bright LED. Now we're gonna try not to blow up any LEDs in the real life version here, but this is how we could do a dimmer in a version of Arduino. So let's hop over to our actual real world version and talk about this particular potentiometer. So I've left my uh, LED circuit hooked up here. Uh, I actually took and I actually cut the resistor's legs using a pair of cutters and actually shortened them. So this resistor is the old one I was using and it's just really short. It is currently connected to the negative lead, the, the, uh, the blue terminal strip right now. And I've got my LED here, and I'm just going to kind of bend it out of the way just so it's out of the way. And then I've got my potentiometer. Now they come in a bunch of different shapes and sizes. I've got this one. This may not be the one that's in your kit in the lab. Yours may be blue. It may be blue with a box, but they all have a dial on the front. That's all we know. They also all have three legs. Terminal one, terminal two, and a wiper in the middle. So we're going to take this potentiometer, and I'm going to slide it into my breadboard here, making sure that my wiper ends up in the... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to plug this in backwards on this breadboard so you all can see it. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to bend it a little bit forward just so I can hook up some wires here. Now I'm going to do exactly what we did in the last uh, in the Tinkercad version, and then I'm going to run a wire into my negative lead. I'm just making sure that it's not actually in the same row as any uh, other piece of this uh, setup. I'm just going to check to my zoom cam here so we can see this a little better. Okay, I'm going to plug this into negative. Now, it is going into negative at the same time as the resistor, and that's okay. That's what happened in Tinkercad as well. I'm going to take my positive wire, plug it in here, plug it into my positive side of my, uh, my breadboard here, okay, my positive power rail. And now, what I should have here is I should have a potentiometer that I can use to actually change the brightness of this LED. I'm just going to zoom out here so we can go to our main webcam and take a look at this. Okay, make sure my power's on. I apologize for bumping the camera there. It's unfortunate. And I am going to turn around and test to make sure that this does what it's supposed to. Let's give it a turn, give it a turn, give it a turn. You can see that I get an LED that dims and brightens depending on how much I turn the potentiometer. And even though you see it on the screen as having a little bit of a red tinge to it, uh, I think that's a problem with the camera because it is very, very much blue in what I'm looking for here. So, there you go. Here's how you can create a dimmer using a uh, Arduino, uh, a, sorry, an Arduino, a potentiometer, and a resistor, LED, all that fun stuff. This gets you into the world of analog, so now we can go in half measures. We don't have to be fully on or off like the digital world we were living in before. Hope that you enjoyed that. Hope you have some fun playing with it. Enjoy, and uh, happy experimenting.